Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, here's Good News Christian Church, family of faith, hope and love where Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And that's what we're about here is becoming that family of faith, hope and love. And also proclaiming Jesus who is alive today and doing miracles today. Well, welcome if you've come to, to this morning, to this Sunday morning. This is actually a recording from yesterday. I'm actually right now here, it's uh, I think it's 6.30 about. It's Saturday evening, 6.30, and I'm recording now because I'm taking a few days off. And that means then, of course, the live broadcast would be difficult to do tomorrow morning or tomorrow night. And we have other people taking care of those services. But on Sunday morning, we have worship leaders and we have uh, Eilisha speaking Sunday morning. And then on Sunday night, again, we have worship leaders. We have Joshua coming and he's going to lead worship from in the Sunday night service and we have Ali speaking there as well. So I just wanted to come here online and get this together, this small devotional, particularly for those of you who actually only tune in online at the moment because of different reasons, whether it was lockdown or physicality and all those kind of things. And we wanted to make sure that you had some way of connecting together. So hopefully you can join in there in the live chat in both on YouTube and Facebook. It's a premiere on YouTube. It's hopefully also a premiere broadcast on on Facebook as well at 11, 11 o'clock. So if you're there, please say hi to one another. I'm Tom Hoban, if I didn't say that already. Don't know if I did. Um, I'm pastor of Goodness Christian Church. So sorry we can't do a live broadcast this morning. It was just too difficult to kind of organize all of that. So again, those of you who want to get to the nighttime service, uh, or the morning service every week, please let us know via text. Text me, because I'm still looking after that because it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, text me if you want to get to the morning service or the nighttime service in the Haven Cafe. It's the 11 a.m. service kicking off every Sunday morning and it's the 7 p.m. service in the Haven. And because of the restriction of numbers, we have to have a booking service. So please hope you understand that. So please text me if you want to be there and Next week we have a different speaker and we have worship and the whole works, everything going, even while I'm not there. The only difference is the live broadcast won't be happening and I'll actually bring a, uh, another devotional next week. Sometime during the week, I'll just let the Holy Spirit give me something to bring to you so that we can join together. But again, if you're there right now, please say hi on YouTube and on Facebook, please say hi. Let people know who you are, where you're from. You know, if you're from somewhere foreign or if you tuned in uh, at a later date, please say hi. We just want to be a blessing to you. It's always a little bit funnier now that I'm doing recording because when you're doing recording, you think of editing out everything and everything, but I'm I'm going to leave it as simple as possible. Uh, it's already 6.30 and I'm supposed to go out with Sam for dinner for the Saturday evening, start of our holidays as such, start of taking a little break. So I just want to, yeah, <clears throat> you know, get this as well as that out there and up, upload it as soon as possible so that I can bring Sam out for dinner and just have a relaxed evening. So I want you to, if you want, if you wouldn't mind, I want you to now at this moment just think of things that you want to thank God for right now. And then on YouTube chat and on Facebook chat, please just say what you want to thank God for. We want to hear what you want to thank God for and to hear amen to that. So if you got something you want to just, God, I thank you for this. Just put it there. Don't wait for somebody else. Just put it in the chat right now. We praise God with you. We thank God for your life, what he's doing in your life, how he's blessing you, sustaining you, bringing resurrection power, sustaining you through anything that you have to go through. Thankful for what you've already gotten through. We, we bless you in the name of Jesus. That Jesus brings us into victory. He helps us to go through stuff. He helps us to overcome stuff in Jesus' name. And particularly of eternity, that our souls are saved and secure in the love of God. In all these things, we are more than conqueror through him who loved us. I would like to raise up a prayer request, uh, particularly for John, John, um, forgive me, John, if I'm pronouncing your name, your surname wrong, Malal. Uh, some of you would have seen the message, a uh, prayer request that went out for his extended family. His niece uh, passed away suddenly she's only 20 years of age i thought it was 18 she's only 20 years of age she passed away suddenly up in his home area up around county leash and we just bless that family for the loss of their loss of uh, a young lady so you know only 20 and we just bless that family as they're going through this the parents and everybody involved it's a heart rendering when somebody passes away anytime but particularly under sudden and young uh, circumstances we just bless them right now 
And if you have any prayer requests, put them in there and uh, let people just pray for you. And if you are praying for those prayer requests, please let the other people know I'm praying or amen to that and just bless one another as well. Please get into the chat. As I said, even if you're tuned in a year from now and you get this, please just bless. It's good. It's good to interact. Now today, or I should say, yeah, today, this morning, even though I'm recording it Saturday night, you'll see it tomorrow morning. Today, I just want to look at a small passage of scripture that I'm meditating on myself personally. So this is more devotional than a, a message as such. <clears throat> and I'll have to actually hold myself from getting into preaching mode. But I just want to share with you a passage of scripture that I'm going to be meditating on myself. It's a passage of scripture I've often meditated on, but it's just something I feel led by the Holy Spirit to meditate on uh, until he tells me otherwise. So it's a passage of scripture that may be familiar to uh, many of you. So if you get, want to take out your Bible and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and I'm going to start in verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. As I said, this is a passage of scripture I'm meditating on and I just want to share some thoughts that the Holy Spirit has given me or some things I'm thinking about as I'm meditating on it and just as a devotional to me as God is speaking to me. So I'm going to read out that passage from the NIV from the 2011 edition and I'm just going to get that on my phone, which I nearly read my Bible a lot from my phone these days or from my computer. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says this, or verse 14 I should say. 17 is the one that people have memorized off pretty often. From verse 14 it says this, For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them, and was raised again. Verse 16, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view, though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, or he is a new creation, one or the other. The old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God reconciled the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is a passage, as I said, I'm meditating on and letting God speak to me. So I'm reading it and quoting it and going over it and thinking about it and asking the Holy Spirit questions. In context, this scripture is Paul t talking to the Corinthian church, helping the Corinthian church get through a lot of stuff, and division and immaturity and lots of different things. He, as you read about 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. And one of the things he also, also had to deal with was not only division, but even attacks against himself and his authority. And in context, just before that, he started to see that he's really a genuine person of God. And one of the reasons why you know he's a genuine person of God is because of the effort he puts in for the things of God. That once he was a person who rejected Christ and persecuted the church, but now he's a person who lays down his life and gone through shipwrecks and all kinds of stuff, enemies and stuff, and just laid down his life for the sake of the gospel, for the good news, to bring the good news to others. And, and from there he comes into this area of just bringing a little bit of a, a synopsis of his message and why he does it. He starts off, for Christ's love compels us. But he's compelled. He, he's come to know that God has loved him and that the Messiah loves him and loves everyone else, both Jew and Gentile, everyone. And that he's come to know the love of God and the love of Christ, particularly in the actions of God through his son Jesus with the death on the cross and the resurrection, his whole life. And the very Jesus whom he persecuted, now he recognizes is the actual Jesus who is the Messiah, the Christ, and the expression of God's love towards him and towards everyone, Jew and Gentile, everyone, young and old, everyone, big sinner, small sinner, every kind of sinner in between. And that love that has broken his own heart 
has shaped his own soul. The love of Christ towards him and the love of Christ that has become to move in his own heart. That is now compelling him to bring others into this goodness, into the good news of God. It compels him to work really hard. And that's his context here. He's, he's saying, I work really hard. I'm a genuine servant of God as opposed to those who are causing disruptions in the Corinthian church. Those are those who are super apostles or whatever. He's saying that, no, it's the love of Christ that compels me to preach this gospel and and, and what it is. Because he's convinced, verse 14 again, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. God bless the Calvinists. They think that Christ only died for the saved. And that to think he died for the whole world and yet half the world not accepting Jesus is somehow a waste or somehow says something about the inefficiency of God. And, and therefore Christ didn't die for the whole world. He only died for the saved or the elect as such. <clears throat> now, I'm not a Calvinist. And I think that's actually abhorrent to God's character. God loves everybody, not just the saved. And he's expressed that love for everybody. Christ died for all. All meaning all. There's no... All as in only the elect. There's, that's not in there. It's all. He, he died for you, me, and everybody in between. Christ died for all and therefore all died in relationship to Christ. <coughs> now not everybody accepts that. But all have died in Christ. Therefore all died. Now if all died, he, he's synopsing there with the whole Jewish background, with all the teaching that if they died, then their sins are paid for. If they've paid the debt penalty, their sins are paid for. Not just God forgives, but actually sins are paid for. You know, if God just forgave to some degree, it would be somewhat unjust. What I mean by that is this, is let's say there's somebody who committed murder. Or somebody who robbed the bank and committed murder on the way and, I don't know, done other stuff, you know, killed loads of innocent people in the bank and shot people on the street as they were getting away. And then they got caught. And then they went before the judge. And then they said to the judge, I'm really sorry. And they meant it. Let's say they even meant it. I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I, I realize my wrong robbing and killing people and any other crimes that he's committed. And he says, I'm sincerely sorry. And he really even me means it. And the judge turns around and all the public that are there, the, all the newspapers are there with their flashing cameras and the victims of the families are there and even those who've lost their businesses because the money couldn't be returned or whatever. And they're all there. And then the judge says, well, because you said you're sorry and because you meant it, um, I'm going to forgive all your trespass, all your sin as such. I'm going to forgive it all and you can go free. They would be up in arms because they would feel that justice was not done. To forgive is one thing, but... That is great, but there is also the need of justice and that need of wrongs to be righted. And so God is a God of forgiveness and God is a God of love. But he's also a God of justice. He's a God of justice. Every sin will be paid for. Every trespass will be paid for. But here's the good news. The, out of the love of God, out of the love of Christ, not just the justice of Christ, out of the love of God, Christ Jesus died. Look at verse 14 again. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. That Jesus paid the price and in Christ all died. Those who are in Christ all died. The sin is not just forgiven, it's paid for completely. Completely and in full. Verse 15. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and raised again. That out of that forgiveness and out of the work of this salvation, not only is there forgiveness, not only is there the sin is paid for, but there's that dynamic, there's some spiritual dynamic that creates an empowerment 
by which the person who has been set free from their own sin and the judgment of their own sin through Christ's death, as he died for all that they have truly in Christ and in God's eyes died. And it's a real effect, not just some stroke of the pen or some gymnastics of the mind, but a genuine real effect of justice has been served whilst love has been served, whilst forgiveness has been served completely. And that out of that, not only does it create a freedom and a healing and but even the person who was a perpetrator of wrong, they're empowered now and called and empowered to live a new life. That Christ's resurrection power is in them as they accept Christ's death for them. There, there's also this dynamic of Christ's powerful life in them and a new life begins. Now that's verse 14 and 15. And if that is true, and if that is as powerful as we expect it to be, and real, that love of God compels us to share this good news to others. It shares it, it compels us to share to others, it compels us to live in the good of it ourselves, to know forgiveness, to know justification, to know sanctification, the empowerment of Christ's resurrection life, and to bring that other to others because this is what will change the world one person at a time as they accept not only the forgiveness of God, the justice of God through Jesus' death and resurrection that sin is paid for completely and the empowerment to live a newness of life. <clears throat> and if we have that mindset, then we should think differently. And that's why he says in verse 16, he says this, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly or fleshy point of view Though we once even regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. That so from now on, even though some people saw, including Paul, Jesus as, they saw Jesus as a false prophet. And Paul saw Jesus as a failed person who, who proclaimed themselves as the Christ. And the cross they saw as a, a judgment from God, actually. But it was the power of God and the love of God displayed in, and the justice of God displayed in perfect harmony. And so from now on, we not only see Jesus as different, that he is the Christ and that he's done this work through the wisdom of God and salvation, but everyone else were around that there's the potential for them because of the work of Christ, the grace of God, the grace, the gift of Jesus. There's the potential for them not only to receive forgiveness, but to come and experience this love that brings them into a place of death that their sins are paid for, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, that they recognize that they have died in Christ, that their sins are paid for. And then in that death, it somewhat frees them from the power of sin. And there's a resurrection life. There's a new way of the spirit that they can begin to take a hold of that bring a newness of life. That when we perceive that for ourselves and we perceive the work of Christ on the cross is for everyone, it should really change our thinking about how we view people around us. That everyone around us, whether they know it or not, that's another thing. But everyone around us has the potential to experience this dynamic of the grace of God, the love of God and the kingdom of God. And walk and begin to walk in the fellowship and the friendship of the Holy Spirit. And that this newness of the kingdom of God could come into their lives as their heart is died and rose again as such that there's this resurrection power that when we perceive that really for ourselves to then out of the love of God towards ourselves that we've experienced and love for others as Christ's love compels in, in, inside us but also the compelling of this this dynamic this powerful gospel this powerful good news that we are to see people differently and then to give them the opportunity so from now on, verse 16, so from now on, because of the work of Christ in us and in the life of the world and the possibility of, the, of tapping into that for every soul. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view, but now from a heavenly, from a God point of view instead. No ones we regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. So this is the thing is for us to really have a new perception, both for ourselves and for others. To have the perception that comes about differently because of the genuine, solid, eternal, spiritual, and yet historical. It was in time. It wasn't a concept. It's, it's in time. Jesus truly is the Christ who truly died and rose again. 
Now this is a powerful act of God that really brings around a powerful dynamic for all of us. By faith, we simply say amen to what God is doing in our lives and we try and increase faith in the others. And I'm going to leave it go now because it's just a short devotion I wanted to do. And maybe, I don't know, because I'm, I'm on holidays right now, maybe next Sunday I'll continue on with verses 17 and following down to verse 21. But at this moment, I just really wanted to share that for you this morning. To think about the fact that God loves you He doesn't just forgive you. Christ died for you. Therefore, all have died, including you. And once you've died in Christ, once you truly have died in Christ, that your sins are paid for. And not only you, the sins of the whole world is paid for. The Lamb of God has taken away the sins of not just the elect, the sins of the world. You might say, then, is it insufficient that not the whole world takes a hold of it? No, God's love is more than abundant. It's overflowing. It's not insufficient. It's it's there for the possibility for whosoever. For Christ, I'm, we might even get into that in the next session as such or next Sunday. We'll see. But recognize that God's love then compels us to bring that truth, to, to see people differently and to bring that truth to others, to perceive things differently. We, from now on, even ourselves, we regard no one, including ourselves, from a worldly point of view, but from a gospel point of view, from a heavenly point of view, to change our thinking and be transformed in the renewing of our minds as we begin to see things from God's perspective, from the gospel's perspective, from the historic event of Jesus coming to earth as a human being and as a fully human being, but also the Son of God dying in our place. And as the pure one, he died in our place that we all died so that we can also receive all of us resurrection life and therefore new creation has begun be blessed and be a blessing god bless you again if you want to get into the live services on sunday morning or sunday night please text me text me before five o'clock on saturday next week this week text me before five o'clock on saturday so i can make sure that the others who are managing the seats and the social distancing and all that goes with that are able to you know do the best we can under the ways that we have to do things at the moment so please do so uh next sunday tonight there might be some seats left if you text me in maybe you might get a shot but you i don't know i might have my phone turned off i don't know no guarantees but definitely before six o'clock on saturday and next week we have different worship leaders again and then also we have different speakers as well so Be blessed and be a blessing. God bless you. Make sure and say hi to one another as you tune out of the chat. And again, hit like if you've been blessed this morning already. Uh, Consider following. We will consider following on Facebook or subscribing on YouTube. Hit the notification bell and just be blessed and a blessing. God bless you. Have a good day. Have a good day.